I know. All right, here we go. So, finish taking attendance here. All right. One hour so, if y prime equals the square root of 2x plus 1 over y squared. Okay. And the coordinates is 0, 3, okay, is a point on the graph of y. Find y in terms of x and find y of 4. Or find the value of y when x is 4. <coughs> okay. So there's our situation. And now while y prime might be helpful to us when we're doing derivatives, right, we know what it means. It means the derivative of y. Uh, specifically in this case, it means the derivative of y with respect to what? X, right, because there are other variable there is x. Okay, so we're going to assume it's really standing for dy dx. And so we'll go ahead, we need to rewrite that y prime, which is not as helpful, into dy dx, which is more helpful um, for what we're, you know, what we know we kind of have to do here, which is, you know, separate our variables and stuff like that. <coughs> All right, so speaking of separating variables, do that at this point, right? Mm -hmm. So again, I told you guys, right, the divide that dx, we always want to multiply it over. So let's go ahead and just do that. So we have dy equals the square root of 2x plus 1 over y squared, okay, dx, like so, right? You can cross multiply. You can cross multiply, yes, but again, I'm going to, you know, well, yeah, exactly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spell it out for us, not only because we're just learning it right now, but also because I want you, yeah, to be able to see this, because sometimes that cross-multiplication won't always be very helpful, or it won't be as obvious some of the, some of the harder ones. So this is really what I want us to get used to. We have the dy on this side, we have the dx on this side, so i got to move my y squared over here, okay? And so multiply the y squared over, so we get y squared dy equals, and I'll also rewrite that... <coughs> Let's rewrite the square root of 2x plus 1 as 2x plus 1 to the 1 half dx. Okay, oh like my gosh, so. You saw yeah. Okay, so, right, at this point, now we have all of our stuff on the left and our stuff on the right, our y's and dy's on the right-hand side, sorry, left-hand side, and our um, x and dx is on the right-hand side there. Now, <coughs> excuse me, um, now what? I would say you said. Well, we're going to integrate, right? And yeah. please do, do draw in this integral symbol, okay? Don't leave that out. That's, that's important. It's there, uh, necessary to show kind of your work, okay? So, yeah. All right, integral of y squared with respect to y. It's easy. One third y. Yeah, one third y cubed plus c. And now going to integrate this, can we integrate it as it's currently written? No. Yeah, no, we have to let you equal 2x plus 1 there, right? Mm -hmm. So du equals 2dx. Okay, do we have 2dx no. in, our, in, our, in our integrand here, in our integrand? We only have dx. So we have to divide over the 2, make it 1 half du equals dx. And so that 1 half is going to go in front of our integral, u to the 1 half du. Notice you do not have to integrate both sides simultaneously. Or, you know, you can, like, write the integral symbol, of course, because you're doing the same thing to both sides. But here, on the right-hand side, we're not quite ready to integrate yet, so I still have the integral symbol. That's why it's so important to write that plus C after you integrate that left-hand side, okay? You need to show up, that plus C needs to show up as soon as you integrate there. All right. Integral of u to the one-half, well, it's going to be one-half times, okay, so integral of u to the one-half is u to the three-halves, and then out front will be two-thirds plus C like that, and we have then one-third y cubed plus c. Okay.
All right. So now we can combine those C's together, right, as one thing. So let's make this one third y cubed equals. Let's see, the one half and the two thirds cancel, make it one third u to the three halves. Oh, I could have plugged back in. Oh well. Okay. So let me think, let me plug back in here. Ugh, these problems are take up a lot of space. <coughs> God bless you. <coughs> All right, so whoop, whoop, up here. All right, so now we've kind of like simplified as much as we need to there. What else? What else should we start doing here, though? At this point, okay, get rid of the one third. So we'll do that by multiply both sides by three, or you can divide through by one three. You can think of it that way too. Let's multiply both sides by three. I like that idea better. So we get y cubed equals 2x plus 1 to the 3 halves, and again, plus c. The c kind of absorbs that times 3. And we can cube root both sides, right? So y equals the cube root of 2x plus 1 to the 3 halves plus c. So yeah, we have like square roots, roots inside of roots and stuff like that, but that's okay. <coughs> okay, great. Now what? Are we done? No, we yeah, we found y in terms of x. We still need to find the c. So what goes in where? Three for y. Three goes in for y, and zero goes in for x. That's right. So it would be two times zero plus one to the three halves plus c. Okay. So we'll do some math here. So two times zero, some arithmetic. Two times zero is zero. Plus one is one. What's one to the three halves? One. Right. Remember, when you do something to the three halves power, that's like cubing it and then square rooting it, or vice versa, square rooting it and then cubing it. So since we have one, one cubed is one, square root of one is still one. And so it's equal to three equals the cube root of one plus c, and now what should we do? Cube both sides. Cubed, cancel out that cube root. So we get 27, right? Three cubed is 27, one plus c. So c is 26. And so y equals the cube root of two x plus one to the three halves plus 26. <coughs> more there for you. All right, and that's our answer. No, it's not our answer. What do we still have to do? Solve for y four. Yeah, plug in four. So we're going to plug in four here. So y equals the cube root of two times four plus one to the three halves plus twenty six. Okay, so 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Okay, so again, here we, we want to evaluate 9 to the 3 halves. So we could do 9 cubed and then square root that, or we could do it the other direction. We could square root 9 and then cube the answer, right? Obviously, it's easier to square root. So square root of 9 is 3, 3 cubed is 27, so we get y equals the cube root of 27 plus 26, which is the cube root of 53. Yeah. Okay, and so there's our answer. There's our final answer right there. Boom. Okay. That's it. Questions on that one? Whoop. So that's just about a nice half of a page filled up there with math. Very good. Okay. But again, very typical kind of free response style question. So. <coughs> All right. Um, yeah, let me get this one here for you all to try. I don't think I'll be able to fit this on my paper. We'll see. All right. So try this one here. If 4 plus t squared times w prime minus w squared equals 0, and w of 2 equals negative 1, find an equation for w w prime w prime find an equation for w in terms of t okay so one way the ap test tries to like throw little twists on these 
is to change the variables up on you so it becomes kind of less familiar, okay? We're so used to using Y's and X's um, that when we see the W's and T's, we kind of like lose a little bit of our um, orientation maybe because of, we're like, okay, wait a minute, which one's which now? You know, for example, as a little, uh, you know, a little like, I guess, not hint, but a little, you know, help to you here, W prime, okay, that's the same thing as saying D, W. No, it's, well, it's like X, uh, well, sorry, not DX, no, it would be uh, DW over what? DT in this case, right. So T is like what variable? So kind of like our X, and the W is like our Y, okay? And you can see that here, because again, we're, it's W of 2 equals negative 1. W in terms of T, that means you're solving for W equals something with T in it. So go ahead and give this one a try. Um, it's pretty tricky, but I'll, I'll kind of let you guys go on with it here. Well, Ooh. I don't think it's too tricky. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a nice one. Is that U over A arctan? No. Yeah, uh, yeah. U over A arctan times even of U over A. A. One over A? Yeah, yeah one over A. W in terms of T. Yeah. Right, it should be W equals and then stuff with yeah. T on the but other side. But how do you get rid of the equation that W is in? The, 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 right now, W is negative 1 over W. So you can reciprocal both sides. Yeah. Including the C goes down to the denominator, too. Substitution? For which one? Like for... Hold on. All right. Maybe I'll get you guys started here real quick. Here, let me... Let me but I'm not... All right. Let me... Let's kind of... All right. Let's, let's, let's go. For it. I'll start from here. So W prime, we're going to read it as DW DT minus W squared equals zero. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. We need to get our 
W's and DW's to one side and our T's and DT's to the other side. So right now it's my first step. I'll have to add W over. Okay, so yeah, let's start by adding W squared over right now. And that's equal to W squared. Okay. Now what? Multiply both sides by dt. Yeah, don't. 4 plus t squared dw equals w squared dt. You see the problem here. We have dt squareds and dw's. We have w squareds and dt's. So what needs to happen here? Yeah, and the w squared also should divide over here. Right? So exactly right. It's 1 over w squared dw equals 1 over 4 plus t squared dt. <coughs> exactly what you want to do there. Okay. Which, <coughs> in this case, we want to integrate both of these. All right, 1 over w squared is the same thing as integrating w to the negative 2 dw. And then this is the same thing as integrating, well, it's 1 over 2 squared plus t squared dt. Okay. Do you see that this is an arctangent? It is. Do you all see that? It's arctangent, yes? Okay. You should, because it is. All right. Um, integrate, so can I let you go from there then, yes? Go ahead, go from there. Yeah, I have a question. question. <coughs> Alright, so when I multiply it, I have negative degrees, correct, from this step to this step. Wait. The C can go over here, so I would I would do that. Combine your C's together. Don't have two different C's okay. showing so up, you know what I mean? Because that would make it a lot easier just for you. Becomes zero, then, or one. It, would become, it would become just negative W. Negative W one times one. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, did you multiply by negative? Oh, you did. Yeah. You multiply through by negative W. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. And then this would become 1 over, and then you want to divide the arctangent. You, know, you can do that, yes. It would be W times this quantity. You want to divide that over, make it 1 over mm -hmm. then this thing. Yeah, so you get 1 on this side. Yeah. Okay. So then you, you still have the minus CW on the right? Mm, minus C. Well, you don't want to distribute the W. Oh, you don't want to distribute it? No, because you want to get the W by itself. You almost have it by itself. Just divide this quantity over oh, the other okay, side, right? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So, <coughs> Something like that, yeah. Half. Can I just put a 2 on top? No, because it's got the addition there. I guess you could factor out a 1 half and put the 2 on top. That's fine, because the C, technically, you could factor a 1 half out of the C because it's just a constant. So, yeah, you could, I guess, do that in this case. Okay, so Let me go over the real quick. right back. 2 over the arc. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so we have negative 1 equals negative 2 over 100, 2 over 100, 2 over 100, 2 over 100, 2 over 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 2 Yes, I one. Okay, cool. Okay, so all you need, okay. Oh, okay, so we got an answer. Two plus or two. Yep. Awesome. Uh, what was your question? Uh, one, I do 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 one, I
Arctant is 1 over A arctant and U over A arctant. I What are you doing? Now you're floating your back. Yeah, we need to figure out how we're going to smuggle this into the space. What? What? Big jacket. It's an actual large pizza. It's like 15 inches. Do you understand how big a pizza would be? Yeah. Maybe there's just a bad box. No, you can't. It's wider than you. No, you can't. It's wider than you. Definitely can't. Excellent. Excellent. She's like, yeah, the largest, but Excellent. You get like a bunch of personal kind of pizza. I mean, wait, we well, can go somewhere for fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yo, I could just. Uh, is it? Well, the, the Mr. Perno always order, orders pizza to the pool Really? Yeah. I could ask her. So I can't say that it's a Did you get for your season goal of this? Uh, negative two plus three. <laughs> Wait, did you get, Ryan, did you get the two or two? Okay. Yes. Well, that's a great question. How do we do that? Add one to the power. So it becomes W to the negative one, and then negative. One over the new power. Mm-hmm. Plus C. And then so the integral here of this, all right, it's arc tangent, right? Remember, the arc tangent, is that have a 1 over A out front or no? It does, yes. Okay, yes. So it's 1 over 2 arc tangent. Our U here is just T, so we don't need to use a U substitution here. Okay, so we can just say T over 2 <coughs> plus C. So 1 half arc tangent, T over 2 plus C. Okay, we'll go ahead and combine those together the C's together, so we end up with negative 1 over W equals 1 half arctangent of T over 2 plus C. Okay, but we want to get W by itself here. So you can like multiply the W over and then divide. So a couple ways you can do this. You can like re just reciprocal both sides if you want to, just flip both sides. Okay, or alternatively you can multiply the W over and then divide this quantity back over this way. Either way, you're going to end up with, I'm going to go up here and do this so you can run out of space. Um, you'll end up with, um, sorry, you'll end up with um, negative W equals 1 over 1 half the arctan of T over 2 plus C. Okay. And then so it's W equal, and so I'm going to go ahead and just make it negative 1 then. We'll move negative 1 over there. Okay. So there's W equals. <coughs> All right, we good so far on that? Say again? It was negative W, but then I just multiply both sides by negative 1 to make the negative 1. Rather than rewrite the whole thing all over again just to be able to multiply the negative, I just, just did it there real quick. Okay? Now, we have to figure out what C is. All right, we know that W of 2 is equal to negative 1. So where does the 2 get plugged into? For what variable? T. T. Yeah, and negative 1 goes in for W. No, that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> that's where it normally would go in for. That's right. That's why you need to be able to, that's why I wanted to ask it this way, so you would have to, you know, identify what goes where. So 2 over 2 plus C. Okay. Arc tangent of 1. So a tangent of x, a tangent of what gives you 1? Pi over 4. Yeah. So it's negative 1 equals negative 1 over. Um, so that's 1 half times pi over 4. 1 half of pi over 4 is pi over... No, care, careful, it's pi over 8. You multiply across the bottom, so it's 8. So it gives you negative 1 equals negative 1 over pi over 8 plus c. Now what? Wait, what cross yeah, cross multiply. Multiply the pi over 8 plus c over to here, so we end up with negative pi over 8. And again, you can still keep it plus c, because negative 1 times c, the c just absorbs wow. it. Isn't arctan of 
one uh, Richard two? No. Um, no, our tangent of one is pi over four. At pi over oh, four, yeah, pi sine four and cosine are both root two over two, and so that's why, yes. yes. Okay. So anyway, so c equals negative one plus pi over eight. And so our final, final, final answer is w equals negative one all over one half the arctan of t over two minus one plus pi over eight. What was, the, what was the comment question there, Emma? <coughs> you think you'd do it by yourself? So where, where, where was the part where you didn't, you couldn't do it? None of this is stuff that we haven't seen before. I but I, I can, but like I feel like I would just see all this work and be like, I did something wrong. Oh, okay. But see, the hardest part wasn't even seeing the arc. <coughs> Yeah. Right, exactly, in like the arithmetic, or the algebra, the manipulation part. You're right, and I think this is probably more difficult than anything that, that you might see, or it's like at the highest level difficulty, I would say. Like there would, you would not see anything harder than this, Emma. Okay, but I will say this one. The ones we've been working up to this point, except for the two previous ones you just did, the ones prior to these two have been easy pitches, like T-ball. Not T-ball, but you know what I'm saying? It's like a little bit of easy pitches. Now I'm s we're starting to work with these, but these are the hardest you'll see. Yeah. Like, but you're not. See, and also it's familiarity. You haven't done a lot like these, so of course you feel less confident about them. But the nature of these is actually this is the length of the problem. That's why this thing is worth two thirds of a free response question. I mean, it's like it's like six out of your nine points right there doing all that stuff. So if you do it well, then you get a lot of points for it too. Okay. And it, it's, it's very doable. I mean, all the, all the individual pieces are not bad, but putting them all together, right, that's where you have the potential for error. Yeah, Don, you want to come up? All right, so um, speaking of the response questions, I've got some for us to look at. So we're going to do a few here, okay, and actually, like, see this. That's right. My St. Patty's Day present to all of you. Bake some soda bread or make a... I I Okay, no, we do <laughs> hey, Mr. Wood, do you have FTA tomorrow? No. Pull us. Can you pull us? Pull you guys? Can you pull us? I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh. Okay. So, <laughs> let's take a look here at what we've got. Okay. So, these are actual free response questions from an actual test, okay? In fact, um, this one right here, the very first, sorry, these are supposed to be kind of separate here if you want to draw like a little line between C and number two, okay? Um, this one right here is question number five, free response question number five, okay? This is free response question number five from the 2010 form B version of the test, okay? So, just to kind of familiarize you with what that means. Form B is like, if you have um, another AP test scheduled during the calculus one, or if you have like some sort of like scheduling conflict, or if you're sick and you can't come to the origin, like the the normal test day, you take the you take the AP test at a later test day. It's not the same test. It's the Form B version of the test. The Form B version is different. It's a little bit strange. Some of the questions are a little bit funkier than oh the typical oh AP question. Change the numbers. Because then you would still know exactly what you need to do. It's just changing the numbers around. You understand what I'm saying? Like that still would be unfair to the people that were given the extra time. No, but other people <laughs> might share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> right. So yeah. Even though they're not supposed to talk about the test afterwards, you know, it could happen. <laughs> Form B. I, uh, it can be. Yes. It can be harder. Yet it's just weirder, and so that makes it harder. I guess it's not as typical. So let's look at this, though. Let's tackle this. So consider the differential equation dy dx equals x plus 1 over y. All right, considered. On the <laughs> axes provided, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the 12 points indicated. 
and for negative 1 less than x less than 1, sketch the solution curve that passes through the point 0, negative 1. Okay? So we're going to not only graph the slope field, but we're going to graph the particular solution that goes to the point 0, negative 1. All right? So let's make life a little bit easier for ourselves here. Um, let's see here. So how can we maybe graph some of these slopes, but rather than picking a single point at a time, does anyone see kind of a shortcut we could use to kind of help ourselves out here to graph this slope field? Or everything along the x-axis will be a vertical slope. Or a vertical slope. Okay, everything on the x-axis will be a vertical slope. Why? Because y is the only thing on the bottom, so if y equals 0, then Right. On the x-axis, y is equal to 0, and so you can see that the, the, um, if y is 0, then the slopes will be undefined. If you look, though, there are no points there that we have to graph on. We only need to graph these top six points. We only have to graph the bottom six yeah, points here. Okay, so actually we're not going to be graphing on the x-axis. You see that? It's only the top three, six points here and the top six points uh, here, right? It's graphed sure. on the 12 That's points cool. indicated. So All we don't right, have to worry about that one. Okay, if x equals negative 1, what happens? It's always zero. The slopes are always 0. So all along here, where an x is negative 1, this vertical line, when x is negative 1, all those slopes are 0. So that's really quick. Oh, I see that. You see yeah. it now? This is a differential equation? Yeah. Good job, Christian. <clears throat> that's very helpful. Very helpful. Okay. Also, so let's, let's do kind of a similar thing here along the y-axis. Along the y-axis, what are the x-coordinates going to be? The x coordinates along the y axis will be what? Zero. Zero. So this numerator is always going to be what? One, over. one. And so it's one over whatever your y coordinate is. So for example, here at two, it'll be one over two. So it's going to be kind of like a shallow, not shallow, but like a not a steep slope. And then here at the y value of one, what will our slope be? One, because it's one over one. So that's an easy slope to kind of graph to. You can just kind of like estimate it that way. Okay, what about at negative one? So it will be negative 1. And then at negative 2, negative 1 half. So again, a less steep slope than the previous one there. Okay. Let's do the same thing here for x value of 1. So if x is 1, what will our numerator always be? 2. And so we're going to take then that 2 and divide by whatever the y value is. So here at, two, at uh, the y value 2, what's our slope going to be? Positive 1. So we'll kind of like draw a similar slope to what we had right down there. Okay, what about at a y value of 1? We have a slope of 2. So it's steeper than the one we just drew. Okay, skip that one. Okay, what about at negative 1? It'll be negative 2, right? So it's a good, uh, it's like, it's left 2, or sorry, left 1 up 2, right? Left 1 up 2, that's a negative 2 slope there, so that's kind of like that. And then what about at this point right here? So it would be, um, yeah, negative 1. Okay. Okay, cool. <coughs> so, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at 12 points indicated, and for negative 1 less than x less than 1, sketch the solution curve that passes through the point 0, negative 1. So, where should we start our curve? Zero, negative one. So put a big old point right there. Zero, negative one. All right. As we go to the right of that point, which direction should we go? Down. Down. Okay, it looks like it's kind of like a constant, kind of like downward deal or something like that, maybe. Okay. And then as we go to the left, yeah, what's going to happen? Okay, it's going to it's going to top off, right? As we we're going to we're going to increase, but we're going to have to top off. Once we get to negative one, we need to have a horizontal slope there, right? So it's going to like increase, but then kind of top off there, and that's it. We don't have to graph any further than that because it only said to graph from negative one to one. So something like that would so be our graph. So if we go past that, we'll be wrong. I don't know if they'll consider it or not, I guess, which then it wouldn't really matter. But we are, we would be really kind of um, drawing an ignorance because we don't know what happens to the left of negative one. Yeah. Um, if it's the point through the point negative one, negative one, mm -hmm. draw an open circle there? Yeah. 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 Probably yes, but I don't think, yes, 
I don't think they would have done that with these domain restrictions, though, because, yeah, that's kind of unfair of them to say that passes to this point, but, oh, not for this point because uh, it's the domain restriction. Like, I don't think they would be that, you know, kind of sneaky. Okay. All right, next one. Letter B. While the slope field in part A is drawn at only 12 points, it is defined at every point in the xy plane for which y is not equal to zero. Right? Okay. Yeah. Is, we, we agree with that? The slope field in part A is drawn at only 12 points. It is defined, that means this thing works, at every point in the xy plane as long as y is mm -hmm. not equal to zero. Again, why do we have to exclude zero? Because it's will make an undefined slopes there. So now it says describe all points in the xy plane, given that y not equals zero, for which dy dx equals negative one. So this one's coordinates. So we yeah, we need to come up with a kind of like a description here of the all the points that are in the coordinate plane such that we would end up with a slope of negative one. So we just multiply d x across in No, you can look at the graph. One negative two. <coughs> So one negative two would work, but it says describe all points in the uh, x y plane. So you don't just list them. Nope. Okay, you multiply by dx and then they're great. So we no honestly, and there's not there's not a whole lot of like calculation to be done here. It's more just like describe the kind of points that would yield a slope dy dx equal to negative one. Well, they're all going to be below the x axis. So. We, mm, that's true, they'll all be below the x-axis, that's right. Mm -hmm. No, you say that the sum of the numerator will always... Or actually, will they all be below the x-axis? Mm, yes, it would have to be, yes. You say the sum of the numerator will, equal, will always go to the denominator. So it's, let's see here. Let's su say that again, the, the sum of the numerator? The negative sum of the numerator will always equal to the denominator. The negative sum of the numerator. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. So you want, like, the, the numerator's sum, okay, the opposite of the numerator sum to equal yeah. the denominator. Mm -hmm. We could do something like that. Yep, yep, yep. So another option we could do here, right, is to say, okay, well, to make this negative one, we the way this is going to work out is we need the numerator and denominator to essentially be the same number, kind of like what Austin's saying here, okay? But the x value always has to be um, one less than the y value, okay? And they need to be, let's see here, they need to be opposite signs okay describe all points in the xy plane y not equals zero for which dy dx equals negative one yeah we could write an equation here so what we could do is just plug negative one in here for dy dx so let's do that let's plug that negative sub the negative one in and that equals x plus one over y okay Now, if we manipulate this around a little bit, what's something we could do to kind of manipulate this equation a little bit? Negative y yeah, negative y equals x plus 1. Okay, or to manipulate just a slight bit more, we could say it's y equals what? Negative x minus 1. X minus one. Now, what is this an equation of? Uh, a line. It's the equation of a line. Okay, that's exactly right. And so what we could say here is that it's all the points on this line. In the domain. Yeah. In the domain, right, in the domain, exactly right. Mm -hmm. How would you phrase that? So, um, well, let's see here. So I just want to make sure I've got this right here. So um, negative points four. Described by the line blank in the domain of blank will equal negative. So yeah, you can say, we can say here that any point on the line y equals negative x minus 1, okay, will result in, I'm going to run out of space here, dy dx equal to negative 1. Okay. <clears throat> There's one point here we can't include, though, and that's when y would equal zero. So what x value would result in a y value of a zero here? Negative one. Okay, so we have to accept 
um, negative 1 comma 0. Because we can't have our y value be, be 0 because then it would be an undefined slope. But any other point on that line will result in a slope of negative 1. That's a good question. I would say include it again just to be on the safe side. I would say include it again just to be on the safe side. Yeah. So don't it's talking about it is defined at every point in the xy plane. So I think it's including like we now like re remove the domain restrictions from the negative one to one. If that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. All right, last step here, letter C, and we'll, we'll, I'll, we'll stop after this one. I'll give you guys one to try. I mean, I'll have you guys just work one on one here for the assignment, okay? So letter C, find the particular solution, y equals f of x, to the given differential equation with the initial condition f of 0 equals negative 2. Okay, so we, this is, what do we do here? This is where you separate those variables and you integrate it, okay? I'm going to do it on a separate sheet of paper because we do not have enough space for this. Okay, so I'll do it right here. Well, I'll just yield negative x plus c. Say again? Well, negative x plus c. Y negative x plus c. So this thing that we described right here was only for the case when the slopes are equal to negative 1. Okay. Right? And so we're talking more of a general kind of solution about what, you know, gotcha. the solution is. So, um, so a particular solution, again, it tells us right here, we, want, we don't want dy dx equals stuff. We want y equals stuff with x, right? That's the function x there. So dy over dx equals x plus 1 over y. So we multiply the dx over, we get dy equals x plus 1 over y dx. And what's the only other thing we need to do here to separate variables? Multiply the y over. So we get y dy equals x plus 1 dx. And now we can integrate. Okay. <coughs> Integral of y, 1 half y squared plus c. Integral of x plus 1, plus x. Yep, plus c. Mm -hmm. And so we get 1 half y squared equals 1 half x squared plus x plus c. Okay, <coughs> now at this point, what should we do? Or what can we do? Oh, I'll <coughs> yeah, so we could isolate the y at this point. So let's go ahead and just isolate the y. Let's get the y isolated. So we get y squared equals, let's see, it can become x squared plus 2x plus c. And then we'll square root both sides, right? So y equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 2x plus c. Now what? Yeah, plug in our point here. So negative 2 is going to go in for what variable? For y. And then 0 goes in for x. So plus or minus the square root of 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus c. Okay. <coughs> and so then we get uh, negative 2 equals plus or minus the square root of c. But what do we do to both sides? Square it, so the plus or minus is going to disappear. So you get 4 equals C. And there's our answer. No, no that's not the final answer. <laughs> y equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 2x plus 4. That's our final answer. Okay? So there it is. And... For kicks and, giggles, kicks and giggles, I have the scoring guidelines here too. We can kind of see. Okay, just for funs, just Are for you funsies. You having a giggle? You having a laugh? Are you a giggle, All right. So here for part A, here this is kind of interesting here. So here are the point breakdowns, right? For part A, you got three possible points. One point for the zero slopes. If you miss one of those zero slopes, you don't get that point. So you need to make sure you get all the zero slopes. Okay, and this is very typical. They kind of group together the zero slopes and the non-zero slopes, or sometimes they'll group together the positive slopes and the negative slopes or whatever. So you get one point for the zero slopes, so there it is, one point for the non-zero slopes, all the others, and then you get one point for the solution curve, 
through 0, negative 1. So in this case, we were asked for the solution curve. There it is, graph. So there's three points possible there. Letter B. Okay. So again, look what they did. We, we plugged, they plugged the negative 1 in for dy dx. Got that it was the line y equals negative x minus 1. So dy dx equals negative 1 for all x, y with y equal to negative x minus 1 and y not equal to 0. So it's basically what we said there. Okay, one point for that, just for the description. And look at that. Five points for what we just did right there. Five points. Okay, notice how the, and this is a very typical kind of breakdown for points. One point for correctly separating variables. So one point just for manipulating things to the correct direction. One point for the correct antiderivatives because those were pretty easy. One point, look at this, one point for writing down as plus C. Just writing, knowing to write down plus C, you get a point for that. One point for using the initial condition. Notice it's not one point for like correctly solving for C. It's just one point for knowing, oh, I got to plug my initial condition in. And then one point for solving for Y. Okay? Notice this. Two out of five points maximum if you don't put in a constant integration. And you get no points if you don't separate your variables. Okay? So keep those things in mind. Those are big things. Putting that plus C, okay, huge points. Right? Zero out of five, you don't actually separate variables there. So don't miss that, obviously. Um, people would, um, here, let me take this real quick. Sorry, I'll grab this. Um, if students look at it and they have like no idea what they're doing. Now, one thing here I do want to point out that we skipped, and this is my mistake. Since the solution goes to the point zero, negative two, y must be negative. And so therefore, this plus part we throw out, and it's got to be negative square root of x squared plus 2x plus 4. So we, I would have lost a point there. We would have lost a point there. Okay? Because our initial condition that we're given here, f of 0 is negative 2, the only way that plus or minus would yield that f of 0 is negative 2 is if it was negative square root of yeah. x squared plus... Yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Exactly, because because when we for this initial condition to work, plugging the zero in, it would need to be negative root. Kind of stuff. And a question. Um, how many does, does average good score like six, out of nine? six out of nine is a great score. Six out of nine is you're on your way to a five. If you can pull a six out of nine on every free response question, you're on your way to a five. So that's and that's sixty six percent of the points, right? That's two thirds of the points. If you get two thirds of the points, you're on your way to a five. <coughs> and this, this, the free response questions, that's where students tend to get the most points. That's where we really